Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I did my hair. <laughs> I realized that I have new hair like every video, <laughs> but this is mine. So today we're going to be looking at Proverbs 31 as usual. Almost done with this series. I think we have five, six, seven. Okay, so we have about six after today, seven including today, or maybe seven videos, maybe four videos, I don't know. But today we're going to continue with verse 25. Strength and dignity are her clothing and her position is strong and secure. She rejoices over the future, the latter day or time to come, knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. That was the amplified version. Let's see what I glean from this today. So strength and dignity are her clothing. Okay, let's stop right there. When I'm reading the scriptures, I kind of use a bit of an acting technique that I learned, which is to, it's almost like word association or what comes up, you know, when you think of clothing. For me, one thing that comes up is that clothing is to cover you. It's to conceal the unseemly things, right? The things that you maybe you don't want everyone to see. The things that are either vulnerable or not for the public. The idea of clothing yourself with strength and dignity, it's basically saying like, this is what is gonna cover you. This is what's going to protect those more vulnerable areas of you. I would even venture to say that strength and dignity require boundary setting. And that is definitely a way to protect the most vulnerable parts of you or parts of your soul or your personality or yourself that, that you just don't want the public to have access to. Things that are fragile, things that are still you know healing, especially the word dignity to me says boundaries. The other thing I think about when it comes to clothing is an expression of yourself. And so it seems to me like this woman presents herself in a strong and dignified way. That is what she's presenting herself as because clothing is on the outside. It's what everyone can see, right? So it's kind of the opposite of the first point. Clothing is there to be seen. It's there to make a statement, even if you don't want to make a statement. I think for me, that means going into the world, knowing that there are precious parts of me that not everyone needs to know. Not everyone ha needs to have access to or should have access to. And I should clothe myself with strength and with a clear sense of my boundaries. But it also means that I present myself as a strong and clear personality to others, that I do not come off as a weakling or a sitting duck, that people are clear about who I am and that I am able to assert that. And there's a way to do that even if you're shy, I think, even if you're an introvert. I'm an introvert, I can be quite shy. Um, but I do notice that I have, a, I have a tendency to state exactly who I am when the time is necessary. So let's go on to the next part. And her position is strong and secure. Okay, strength again in her position. Because of what is coming after this part of the verse, I'm gonna say position for her is how she has prepared for the future. So how she's positioned herself for things to come. When I think of the word position, immediately what comes to mind is the stock market and how you can position yourself to benefit. There are people who know about investment to the point that they can, they can predict that if they position themselves in a certain way, they will be in a strong and secure position to benefit from the events to come. So that's what I think of with this woman. I think she's, she's put herself in a position where anything that's coming her way, she knows that she'll be fine. She's got her nest egg, built up her, her food storage. It doesn't matter the wave, it doesn't matter the shift. She'll be in a strong and secure position to weather it. I don't know if it's my generation in particular, millennials, 
we grew up watching our parents' dreams come crashing down, even though they did all the right things. You know, they were going to work, they were saving, you know, they bought a house, they did all the things, they got their degree, and we watched their dreams crumble in 2008. And I think that there's a part of the millennial that doesn't really believe that there will be a secure tomorrow. So we end up spending <laughs> for today because I think deep down we don't trust that there will be a tomorrow, but preparation is always wise. That's what I see in this woman. She doesn't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but she's gonna make sure she's secure. And so for me, I think that that means, yeah, how am I spending my money? How am I saving? What am I investing in? How am I preparing for this uncertain time? Where's my next pivot? What other skills do I have that I can build up and maybe also use to profit, to supplement myself if, any, if a disaster happened, God forbid. But preparation is something that I've seen throughout these scriptures on the Proverbs 31 woman. She's not a, she's not a woman to just hope to goodness, you know, that things just work out. She prepares. She says, okay, I'll do what I can do. I'll do all that I can do. And I love that about her. I think that that is such a convicting trait and one that I really want to start honing for myself. How do I prepare for the worst, for the best, for everything so that I feel secure, so that I feel like I'm in a strong position? So that is the first half of the scripture. Let's go on to the next half. This is why I said what I said as far as her positioning. She's rejoicing over the future. And in the Amplified, it goes on to say the latter day or the time to come. And then it goes into why she's rejoicing for the future, knowing that she and her family are in readiness for it. I mean, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Because of all the preparation, because she knows how to hold herself, how to go into the world, how to protect herself, how to hone her skills, how to build them up. She, she looks at the future with joy. Well, she's prepared for the worst, so she doesn't have to worry about it anymore. She's covered her bases, so she doesn't have to keep checking. She can enjoy her life. She can rejoice because she knows she's ready. Not only her, but the people she loves, which was my last video about sharing your talent, sharing your gifts. She's covered. Is that not where everyone wants to be? <laughs> Is that not the place that everyone wants to be internally, where they're not afraid of the future? A lot of that, and we'll see by the end of these scriptures, the real core reason why she is so secure. But, I, but I'm but i gonna just spoil it for you now. When you trust God, when you fear God, when you know that he's given you everything, he cares for you enough to provide you with what you need to survive, to thrive even through difficult times, then you just go out searching for it because you know it's there. You don't make excuses. God's given me everything. So why am I not using it? So why am I not sharpening it, making it more excellent? Why am I not seeking out the resources? Why am I not sharing what I have? It's not like it's gonna deplete and I'm not gonna have anything left, right? Because God is a God of abundance. So why, why am I walking around in scarcity? Why am I allowing myself to be taken advantage of? I'm the daughter of a king. You know, this woman, as I said in one of my previous videos about queens and priests, I think was the name of the video. This woman sees herself as royalty and she treats herself as royalty and she behaves as royalty should, not in some cruel dictatorship or some victim mentality, but she holds herself with dignity and she shares. She sees how she can help. Really, she is truly a queen, not just in the way she dresses, but in the way she carries herself, the way she interacts in her relationships, that's that's where I want to be. That's what I want to be. So I'm going to take from her book or from her chapter and uh, and apply that to my life. And I hope you do too. I, or I hope that you go back and read the scripture and really glean what you can glean from the scripture. And if you discover anything else, you know, I would love to hear down in the comments. Or um, you can like this video if you liked what I had to share. Thank you so much for joining me again on my channel for 
Proverbs 31, Woman and Christian Femininity. And until next time, have a wonderful week. Thank you.